Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Well, we ended up with a good uh, series of scripture for this morning, and um, we're staying on the twos. I, I thought about, well, maybe I'm supposed to go into the, you know, go to 32 next, and it wasn't. It was supposed to be 23. Um, from what I'm getting out of this here is, I, is we're doing everything in the twos. Anything with a two in it is, is the scripture. I think it's. I think there's going to be a story told here. I think this is another way of going through the scriptures. And the Lord may be trying to show us something. Um, a, a story, a, a development, or a, a, you know, we know this stuff's hidden in the Bible. He may be showing us another one. I have to do a little more research into this over the weekend to see what, where it's pointing. Um, excuse me. And our peace verse this morning talks about these things that are happening. And um, it, it may surprise you a little bit what it said. Because it's what the feeling that I've been getting is that, you know, we shouldn't be involved in these things. We should stay out of these things. If you feel, you know, led to comment, comment with something appropriate that's going to benefit the circulation and then move on. Um, I had several people wait till last night to start responding to uh, comments. And some of my comments were just innocuous and had nothing to do with anything specific. And these people were commenting with very specific things, not pertaining to my comment or even the subject matter of the video I was commenting on. It was people looking for uh, an argument or looking for a debate or looking for a discussion. People that were, um, they're pushing their own agenda. And it's weird. It's very weird and it's disturbing that that's what people latch on to. Latch on to the Lord. Be sober-minded. Look at these things with a critical eye. Is this something the Lord really wants me involved in? Or is this something the Lord really wants me to partake in? Should this be my focus? Um, the the whole Shroud of Turin thing. Um, it's, it's a kind of a small group. Um, I had somebody just come out to my channel the last couple of days that, that almost everything they push is about the Shroud of Turin that you're right in the area of idol worship. You're getting into where um, everything that I believe is focused on this one thing. Well, that's not Christ. That's just the wrapping that went around him. And it's very dangerous to get caught up in things that aren't Christ. It's very dangerous to get caught up in things that don't specifically involve him. True, that was if that if if even the shroud of turn was the wrapping, because I don't believe we have any other clothing from back during that time period. So how this piece of very thin clothing uh, survived is astounding. But there's a lot of problems, and there's a lot of um, issues <clears throat> with a lot of these relics that people are coming up with. And what happens is people take their eyes off Christ and go and start to focus on something tangible. Run from these things. Somebody show, If somebody literally shows you the Holy Grail, and, and inside, you know, the Holy Spirit is like, yeah, that's the Holy Grail. Here's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to look at it and go, amazing, I can't believe it survived this long, and then walk away and go back to the Lord. He's the one that saves you, not the Grail. He's the one that gave you salvation, not the grail. The grail is just a relic. It's something he held on to. It's a cup, just a random cup that people have added so much to. Well, people worship that now. It's a, there's a cult for that. Same thing applies to the Shroud of Turin. Same thing applies to so many things that people have gone on about. And they're like, uh, there's people that are claiming they have pieces of the cross that he was hung on. That's impossible. But 2,000 years, there's not going to be wood left. It will rot naturally, and you can't preserve it unless you put it in a very special environment. Usually water. It has to be sealed in there and stay in there. Um, ships that they've brought up from the bottom, you know, they bring them up and immediately the wood just starts to disintegrate because it, it's, you know, preserved in a water environment. They have to put it back in a water environment. Um, but this is what people come up with. They want to find something to latch on to. I'm latching on to the Lord because you know what? He's more real to me than any of these other things. These physical things, this table, I'm sitting in front of a table right now. I can touch this table. I can feel this is hardwood. 
It's got paint on it. You know, I can see it. <clears throat> I can smell it. I can smell the wood because there's bare wood underneath. But Jesus Christ is more real to me than that. Because when I set fire to that table, it's gone. When I set fire to the Lord, nothing happens. I can't set fire to him. He is more real and more permanent than anything. This chair I'm sitting on, the clothes that I'm wearing, the floor that I'm walking on in this house, this house, the ground this house is built on. He is more real to me than any of those things. So if your focus is on something in this world, what did he warn you about this world? Do not be friends with the world. Do not become attached to the world. Separate yourself from the world because these things are perishing. I am not. There is no eternal life with those things. There is with me. So anyone who's caught up in that stuff, anyone who's really enamored with those kinds of things, take the time to look a little closer at your faith. Are you putting a bunch of faith on those things? Is that the center of your faith? Or is Jesus Christ the center of your faith? You can't have an object that's the center of your faith over the Lord. Good morning. You're up early. Hey. Hey. Huh? What happened? Daddy, uh, mm -hmm. wash all it off. Oh, did all the stuff come off? It looks like it's healing pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And make sure, make sure you don't scratch it. That way, it doesn't uh, tear open again. Yeah. Yeah. And my daddy, uh, put this, just wipe it off, like, all, all the skin off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's supposed to come off eventually. Yeah, and, 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 and they do it easy. Yeah. Like, and, and, and they do it careful. Yeah, that's what he's supposed to do. You want me to turn the TV on for you? Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on, guys, because I'm in the middle of a video. Come on, you can watch TV while I finish. My nephew had a had to have surgery because there was a issue, um, a testicular issue with a with a fluid sac, and so they had to actually do surgery. So he's healing up from a, a abdominal surgery because they had to go in through his groin to fix it. So he's got this he's gonna have this nice little scar on his lower belly. Come on. So now I gotta turn TV on so we can finish our video. So st bear with me, guys. In fact, I'm gonna pause the video. Okay, we're back. You're gonna hear SpongeBob as our theme music in the background. So, uh, back to what I was saying. If, if you're if you're focused on a thing, that's not Christ. Christ is above and beyond things. And uh, it's, it's a disturbing trend that a lot of Christians are getting into. And I think, I may be wrong on this, but I think what I'm seeing is that people get into that because they're having a hard time connecting spiritually. So they grab something physical and focus on that. And we shouldn't do that. Um, there's a lot of people, and this is a disturbing trend I've just noticed. And I didn't realize that's what it was before. They're latching on to Bibles. They will worship a, sp a particular version of the Bible. There are people that I absolutely will not uh, accept anything other than King James. I will absolutely not accept anything other than uh, something that is uh, translated from the Latin Vulgate. I will not accept anything other than something that's from the Greek Septuagint. I mean, people get so focused on one fine point and use that as a gauge for everyone else they talk to. And every time it leads into anger and hatred towards other people. I, and I see it nonstop. Um, there's a guy, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to unsubscribe from him or not because he's been going pretty dark direction. And his name is King, it's King James Version's Ministries with Brian Dillinger. And uh, I like him. And he talks about a lot of good things, but I've noticed his videos are starting to swing towards that condemnation. And he's a King James only adherent. His channel was one I got attacked on last night over something that had nothing to do with what the video or my comment was about. And it's like, why are you guys so focused on this? 
the King James isn't perfect either. It's not even the closest. There are closer versions. But that's everybody's focus because that's what they think makes them holy. That's what they think makes them Christians and faithful. It's not. I fully believe when, when God and Jesus both said, my word will stand. Everything else will pass away, but my word will stand. And I firmly believe that you can take any Bible up to a certain point. Because after, I don't know, what was it, 1984, I think, a bunch of things started changing in the translations. Uh, they were they were doing them a little differently. Like the NIV is a big example of that. The older NIV is actually really good. <clears throat> good luck finding one, though. Um, but all the all the the versions and all the translations match what the Bible says. And the way you can do that, because a lot of people will go off of different you know words that aren't present or are present or have been changed. But if you go look at the Greek, you see that the definition matches. And it's the same word because the definition is expanded under the Greek. So this is why it's important for us to take a little bit of time to go and look at that. Go look at, I have a, a study right now on a particular passage I'm doing on Greek words um, for two different words in that passage. And it could change what we think the mark of the beast is. And I'm doing a study in that because I've never seen anybody else do a study on that of what the Greek words were. <clears throat> and I may have a video for that later. Don't know yet. It depends on, on if I find anything worth reporting. But this is what happens. As Christians get so focused on a thing, they forget about the spiritual spirituality. It was never meant for us to grab one singular version and say, this is it, everything else is wrong. If you believe or even read anything else, you're a heretic. But that's what happens with these people. And that's not what we're called to do. That's not godly behavior. So if you're one of those people and you're using that, now listen, using that to look down or gauge or test others, the version of the Bible, if you're doing it that way, you need to change. It's okay to be a King James Version adherent. I've got no problem with that. I love the King James, but the King James is hard to understand and it's hard to explain from because not everybody knows what those words mean. The new King James is a perfect substitute. Now, you can come up with all the reasons you want to not to do it. That's, that's between you and the Lord. The ESV is another good substitute. Now, when you start getting into the newer NIVs, that, that, that becomes a problem because there's whole verses that are taken out. Here's the thing, though, is that there's still, the story is still there. So if you use a little discernment, you can draw it out of there and you can figure out what needs to be fixed and what doesn't. Many of the times in my videos, you guys will see me use the King James, New King James, and the ESV at the same time same verse so it's real easy to prove which ones you know what's going on but i still get people that all the time they're using that as a judgment tool so uh, do you uh, are you king james only or are you you know other versions it's like i use these three versions most of the time and they're going to give me grief about that and you need to go somewhere else i don't have time for that because that's nonsense it's very easy to take another version and go test it and if it passes the test you use it simple but this is, again, this is what Christians like to do because whether they realize it or not, they think it makes them more holy. They think it makes them special. God never said, hey, in uh, 19 or 18, whatever, 17, 16, whatever, uh, when you get to the end of the year 2000s, I want you guys to focus on the King James. He never said that. That's the version I want you guys to stay with. That's a decision we make as individuals. God never commanded that. He said, read my word. Study my word, live my word, preach from my word. And these versions are his word. So that's just an example. I'm not picking on anybody in particular, but this stuff goes to, it can lead you to very dangerous areas. And it leads into condemnation. I've witnessed it with my own eyes. Otherwise, normal good Christians, you don't teach from the King James. I can't believe this. I'm not coming. I'm not going to listen. I'm not rah, rah, rah. They just start going off. That's your problem, not mine. <laughs> I, I, I can't help the fact that you are unwilling to be open-minded and use discernment and look at the other versions and test them. I can't help that. All I can do is show you what the word says. That's why in a lot of times I use all three versions. So anybody who has a complaint can't go, well, I can't believe you taught from that. That's an incorrect translation. Yeah, but you just saw all three translations. Same verse says the same thing. Anyway. It's something we have to decide as an individual. 
am I going to pick a thing and make that my, my spiritual focus, or am I, I going to pick the Lord and make him my spiritual focus? Because that Bible will burn up. You set fire to it, it's gone. And the way I look at it is anything I can set a match to, and if it burns up and, and goes away, that's not something I need to worship. I need to worship the thing that passed through the fire for me. The person that passed through the fire for me and did not get burned. And that's Jesus Christ. Let's get into some prayer. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The, the everlasting, the infinite, our great counselor, our Savior. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We lift you up. We thank you for this most, the most awesome understanding that anybody can have is the understanding of peace, is the understanding of not being focused on untruths, the understanding of not being condensed or limited in any way in understanding. You show us in this word that your word will stand. We can trust that your word will stand. Yet we have people that are denying that. We go by your word and trust that if, if this speaks of your word and we can test it and it passes the test that you give, we can, we can abide by that. But we have a lot of people who are getting connected into idol worship. And what's amazing is you showed me that a lot of the idol worship is contained within the religion. And, and it's not, it was never intended for us to do that. The Lord, I pray you open their hearts. That way they will come into a closer worship with you and not their idols. With you and not their Bibles. The Bible is a book. The Word is written on our hearts. And Father, you've been showing us a lot of these things. You've been bringing out and, and, and presenting a lot of these little understandings. And it's awesome. And you led me to another one today. I'm hoping I find something interesting that will help us. But consistently and every day, every day, you've been showing new things like this. Sharpening our faith and sharpening our understanding and building us up in this most holy faith. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for doing this for us. For us. And you're bringing the psalms and everything together. You're bringing the psalms together. You're bringing the peace verses together to speak to us in these prayers. And that's awesome. Thank you, Father. I'd like to pray Psalm 23 this morning. The Lord, the shepherd of his people, because you've been pushing me to do the twos. So I'm going to stay on the twos and see where this leads. But I feel like you're going to tell us a story. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And this should be all of our desire and prayer, all of us to take this on. If there's a story you're trying to lead us through, Lord, please make it evident and make it known. So we can find it and we can talk about it. And we can bless each other with it. That Psalm 23 leads us to Psalm or to Proverbs 20 verse 3 as our peace verse. It is an honor for a man to keep aloof from strife, but every fool will be quarreling. And I love that you led me that direction with that because this peace verse talks about the things that have been going on. It is an honor for a man to keep aloof from strife, but every fool will be quarreling. And this is exactly what we're seeing today, even within the brethren. And you've been doing that. You've been giving me a desire to lean away from these things, to not engage, to, to disengage from these things and not get involved in them because it's not worth our time. And that's not what you called us to do. So when we come across that type of stuff, Father, I pray that in, in order for you to get the glory that we deny those things and get away from those things and not partake in those things because it never leads to good. And we can visually see it never leads to good. You've got everybody under control. You, you've got things taken care of. You know what's going on and what needs to happen. And you're going to make sure it goes exactly the way it's supposed to go. Whoops. So, Father, my prayer is that we deny ourselves 
these lusts of the flesh that we deny ourselves these constant deny ourselves these constant um, strifes and bickerings and arguments and stay more focused on you and on peace on the things that you called us for prayer on leading people to salvation spreading the gospel the truth helping new Christians all the things that are going to be betterment and all the things that are going to bring glory to you father thank you for this calling and thank you for giving us these directions in our lives and to draw us together and to strengthen us for these things in these last days it, it seems like all the things we should have been doing for the last two two three four hundred years you're bringing together and bringing people to in this last few moments thank you father thank you for this amazing gift and trusting us with this and thank you for giving us showing us the right way to do it that you get the glory we love you father we thank you again for your mercy and grace we thank you for your knowledge and understanding we thank you for your peace thank you for having patience with us and we thank you for your great unending love it is in jesus name that we pray amen so now you guys see what i was talking about we're in psalm 23 and we ended up with a peace verse from proverbs 20 verse 3 but that, that proverb talks exactly about what I've been talking about. It's important for us not to get involved in these things because it just never seems to go anywhere good because people are so hard-headed. Even well-meaning Christians are so hard-headed. We've all been there. We've all been there. But we're being called out of that. Let's respond. Let's get out of those things. And let's get into the things that are good. Things that glorify God. Like that discussion with them guys last night about the Trinity and the Godhead. It's like, this doesn't glorify God, you guys. So maybe some people will wake up to it. Maybe some people will pay attention. Who knows? But um, I'm going to spend more time pulling back from this because I just are being very picky about who I address. Because it just seems everything starts an argument nowadays. And that's not what he wants us to do. He wants us to be together in love and fellowship. And, and that's what we should be doing. So... Use discernment, guys. Test everything with the word. And try to pay attention to yourselves to see if you're using something that either you know or something that you do in your Christian walk as a weapon or as a gauge for another Christian because we're all called differently. We're all called from different walks of life and we're all called to different walks with him. There is no one walk that is perfect. They're, they're all leading to him. Because they're all on the same path. We're just coming from different directions. I love you guys and bless you all in Jesus' name. I'll see you guys in the next video.